Hi guys! We have water waves, sound waves, and electromagnetic waves, which also includes radio waves, microwaves, light, and x-rays. These are examples where we can observe a periodic disturbance that propagates. Even in quantum mechanics, we have these probability waves that allowed us to tell the likelihood of finding an electron. In this lecture, I will discuss waves and sounds. Let's start. This is the outline of this video lecture. Let us check a scenario wherein I am holding a string to one end and pulling it tightly. If we do a sudden motion on the end that I am holding, a traveling pulse will be observed, as shown. This pulse travels at speed v along the positive x direction, and I will be uh, calling this one the wave velocity. If I continue moving my hands in an up-down motion, in simple harmonic motion or SHM, I will generate a transverse sinusoidal traveling wave. I have this figure shown on the right uh, that shows the position of the wave at two subsequent times illustrated by the solid and broken waves. As we have stated, uh, it is moving to the right at speed v. Take note that although the wave moves to the right, the matter or particles present here is not moving in the same direction shown in red or in red dots. The particles move up and down which is perpendicular to the propagation of the wave which is going to the right. And this is transverse waves. For one-dimensional sinusoidal waves, we can create a mathematical model called the wave functions that is used to find the position, velocity, and acceleration of the particles of the medium of the wave as a function of time. I have this uh, GIF file. Notice that each point in the string oscillates up and down in simple harmonic motion between positive A and negative A with a period of T. Recall from our algebra that if we have a function f of x, then f of x minus D is just that similar function translated in positive x direction by distance D. Similar with the function of f of x plus D, which is translated now in the negative x direction by the distance d. Furthermore, the wave moves uh, with constant speed of v and it traverses one wavelength lambda per one period t. Now, uh, we can model this wave using a periodic or sinusoid function. Let us consider the ratio of the angle theta with position x as shown. Note that a sine function oscillates between positive 1 and negative 1 every 2 pi regions. Thus, we can write this. So, theta is equal to 2 pi over lambda x. Using this argument theta, we can model the y position as a function of x as shown here. If the wave now travels in, uh, in a positive x uh, direction with constant uh, wave velocity uh, v, it moves a distance v times t at a time t. Therefore, uh, we can write this one, the argument of sine as follows. Now, we distribute 2 pi over lambda inside the parenthesis. We will have this expression, wherein the quantity 2 pi over lambda is defined as the wave number. Recall that the angular frequency omega in our discussion of rotational motion can be expressed as 2 pi over the period t. Therefore, the second term of the argument uh, shown in this equation, so I will point to the second term, this one, this one, can be expressed as follows. So this will be equal to 2 pi over lambda, lambda over t, which is your uh, wave velocity or wave speed times t. And this is equal to this, uh, wherein we can rewrite this one in terms of angular frequency. Therefore, the second term now has this form, and we can write the simple harmonic wave on a string as follows. Let us have a quick discussion of the parts of a wave. Wave crest is the highest part of a wave. Wave trough is the lowest part of a wave. Wave height is just the vertical distance between the wave trough and the wave crest. So this one, the vertical distance. 
Well, the wavelength shown in here as lambda is the distance between two consecutive wave crests or between two consecutive wave troughs. The wave velocity can be expressed in terms of our angular frequency, omega, and wave constant k as shown. So it can be derived as follows by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2 pi. We can also express our wave velocity v in terms of the number of crests uh, passing through a point per second or the frequency f. And this is a popular equation of v is equal to f, the frequency times lambda. And I want you to remember that one. The position of a mass on a spring system can be modeled as follows, uh, where the angle phi here is called the phase shift, given the initial condition of the x uh, and the velocity y, or the velocity v, I mean. Allowing an initial phase uh, shift, we can write our argument for the wave function model as follows. So we have kx minus plus omega t plus phi. Uh, this argument of the sine function is called the phase of the wave with an initial phase phi. And the second temporal term describes the wave direction, if it's going to the left or to the right. Okay, now let us have a quick discussion of the speed and energy transfer for the case of a wave on a string. Given a string tension t and mass per unit length, also called as the linear mass density mu, we, the wave velocity is expressed as v is equal to the square root of t over mu. So that's quite simple. And now uh, let's go to an oscillating mass spring system. Remember that the total energy of the mass is expressed as e is equal to 1 half Ka squared, wherein K is the spring constant that can be expressed as m omega squared, as shown. If we consider an infinitesimal length dx, so this is just a fancy term for a very small amount of, of length, or for this case we have also infinitesimal mass, so infinitesimal mass uh, dm ex expressed in terms of the linear mass density mu, as shown. And therefore, we can express the infinitesimal energy dE as 1 half dm omega squared a squared. And we can rewrite dm here in terms of mu dx. Uh, this is uh, quite straightforward. So therefore, if we want to get the rate of energy transfer, what we need to do is to get the time derivative of this dE. And we will have this final form, which is equal to 1 half mu v, the wave velocity or wave speed, omega squared a squared. Let us assume we have two pulses sent through a string. First wave is reflected and as it returns to the origin, it interacts with the second wave. It is said that the two waves interfere if two waves of the same velocity and wavelength are traveling in the same direction on a string. For the first rowing, where the rope is tied at one end, the two waves are upside down, out of phase by 180 degrees, with the same amplitude from each other. They cancel each other out, and it is called destructive interference. On the other hand, if they are in phase, as illustrated for a rope loose at one end, they are in phase and will interfere constructively that will result in stronger wave. Overall, this is called superposition of waves, wherein we add together wave displacements. Standing waves refers to the combination of two waves moving in opposite directions, each having the same amplitude and frequency. The phenomenon is actually just a result of interference. That is, when waves are superimposed, their energies are either added together or cancelled out. Shown here is a simple expression or a straightforward expression for the superposition of two waves. Using the trigonometric identity of adding two sine functions, we can have this final expression for our standing wave y, which is equal to this. 2a sine kx cosine omega t. 
When amplitude of standing wave is zero, the point is called the node. On the other hand, when the amplitude is at maximum, the point is an antinode. Let us now discuss a string with length L, so it's a specific length, and both ends are fixed at origin 0, 0, and at length L, so x is equal to L. Traveling waves can uh, interfere and create a standing waves as illustrated in my drawing here. The string's length can be expressed as an integer multiple of one half of the wavelength. So this is L is equal to N, one half of the wavelength lambda. And therefore, this is the expression for the lambda or the wavelength. The standing waves shown will be generated if the string oscillates at this frequency expression uh, shown here, which is equal to N V over 2L. And this is called the resonant frequencies. The, uh, this represent large amplitude oscillations. Structures like bridges have also possible resonant modes or resonant frequencies. If it is driven at resonant frequencies, large amplitude oscillations will be generated that may break the structure. When n is equal to 1, so for this case, it is the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. And we can get a second harmonic using our fundamental frequency f sub 1. Next, we will talk about sound waves, which is a form of longitudinal pressure waves. Unlike transverse waves, the pressure variations here are parallel to the direction of the wave travel. Let us consider a long coiled spring on a horizontal surface. If I move one end, shown here, back and forth, regions of compression and refraction will be generated as labeled here. The speed of the sound is expressed here as the square root of the bulk modulus b and mass density rho of the medium. Generally, the velocity of mechanical waves is expressed as this, which is the square root of the elastic property over the initial property. Now let's talk about sound wave terminologies that you might encounter. First, we have the pitch. Pitch is just a perceptual sound property that can be ordered based on its frequency. While loudness of sound is determined by the power intensity of sound waves. The hearing range of humans are in the range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz. While humans can detect intensities in the range of 10 to the negative 12 to 1 watt per square meter. We have also this quantity beta which is a measure of sound intensity with the units of decibel expressed by this logarithm expression. Standing sound waves can be generated in a column of air, let's say, uh, illustrated by my drawing for the first uh, harmonics and the second harmonics, such as in an organ pipe or in a horn. Longitudinal pressure waves are reflected back when hit an obstruction. For a pipe open at both ends, the resonant frequencies are expressed as similar for a string fixed at both ends. So we have Fn is equal to N V over 2L. While in a pipe closed at one end only, only odd harmonics can be generated uh, and expressed with this one. So F sub N is equal to N V over 4L. Beats in acoustics is an interference pattern between two sounds of slightly different frequencies. The figure here shows the superposition of two waves. Let us say we are at the origin of the two waves Y1 and Y2 with frequencies F1 and F2 respectively. Using this trigonometric identity of adding two cosine functions shown, we can produce this expression for the y, which refers to the beats. Last is the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is the change in frequency of a wave in uh, relation to an observer or detector who is moving relative to a certain sound source or wave source. The source emits crests of pressure waves, shown here in this uh, GIF file, 
at a given frequency f at the speed of the sound waves v. The spacing between the crests is reduced as illustrated uh, given that the source moves after each crest it generates. Thus, when a source approaches you or the detector and you are stationary, the higher frequency is perceived, while when the source moves away, a lower frequency is heard. We have this expression for the frequency detected f prime, uh, which is equal to this quantity. Uh, this refers to the detector speed, the, the speed of the source, the wave speed, and the frequency when the detector and the source are stationary. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GT Academia. See you in the next video.